Have you ever wondered which adjustment layer is better for your colors, the hue saturation adjustment layer or the selective color adjustment layer? Or maybe for you, it's not about which one is better. It's about which one do I use and why do I use it? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're actually going to pit the HSL or hue saturation adjustment layer head to head with the selective color adjustment layer and see which one is better or is one actually better is the question we need to ask ourselves. So on this test image that I have here, I'm going to start out just by grabbing an HSL adjustment layer and a selective color adjustment layer to get this going. To do that, I use my adjustment layers here at the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and click on hue saturation and the selective color adjustment layer. Now, why this is at the bottom, I do not know. It should kind of be here in with some of the other color adjustment layers that we have right here, but it's at the bottom. So here's a selective color adjustment layer. Now, for anybody who's ever heard the term selective color, this does not necessarily mean that we're going to remove a color from the image from a, let's say a black and white photo and just make the red stand out on a black and white image. That is a technique called selective color where you make one color more dominant than the rest. And we typically see that with black and white images, but this is not what we're talking about here. We are talking about selectively editing a given color. That's what selective color stands for. Not making a black and white image and only making red show. Although we've all done it, right? I know you have. I did. So let's first actually just look at the similarities between the two. Uh, what you might be most familiar with is the HSL adjustment layer. It's probably the easiest one to use and one that we go to most often because it's self-explanatory. We can modify the individual colors here or all the colors here within the given hue saturation or lightness. Now, what these are, are color properties. The hue is basically what color is the color. The saturation is how potent is that color. And the lightness is how much black or white is present within that color. Now, if we look at the selective color adjustment layer, we have the individual colors here to modify, but what we don't have are the color properties of hue saturation. We do have lightness, but it's actually called black here. So if you look at these, what we see here in the selective color adjustment layer is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If you're familiar with printing, you'll see that cyan, magenta, yellow, and black are the ink cartridges that we use. So this selective color adjustment area can actually be very useful tool to remove the amount of magenta that might be an image after you look at a test print or increase the amount of cyan, et cetera, et cetera. However, it can also be used to modify the color properties of hue, saturation, and lightness. It's just not as easy to see that. Now, as far as the similarities between the two, of course, you're always gonna have your blend modes that you can use, your opacity and your fill, as well as blend if, and all those other crazy cool things that we have when it comes to working with our layers and our images. Beyond the fact that they can both modify our colors and we can use all of the layer tools to modify those colors, there really are no other similarities between the two. All right, so that's where we're going to get into our surface level differences. Now, when we look at these, the surface level differences, let's look at HSL. Looking at HSL, we can modify the master colors or all the colors in the image, getting that boost in color. If we were to go to our selective color, we do not have a master color adjustment here, right? Let's go back to our HSL. The other surface level difference is that within the HSL adjustment layer, we can click on this targeted adjustment tool and we can click on a color and it will tell us exactly what color that is. Now, that's all fine and well when we're looking at these literal colors that are showing up on our image. But what about this area here? Is it yellow? Is it orange? Is it red? What color is that? That can be hard for us to see with our eye unless we're trained in pixel technology and what color that would be. My guess is that's going to be our reds. Let me click it and oh, look at that. It's our reds. I didn't actually pre-plan that. That's because I, I do this clicking on colors a lot in my images. You might have thought that was yellow, but that's OK. That's why the HSL adjustment layer can be very helpful to identify what colors are an image. The selective color adjustment layer does not have the ability to find the color that you're going to be modifying. One of the other major differences that you're going to see here with selective color from HSL is that we do not have the ability to just look at the overall hue of an image. The way we actually modify the hue within our image or the colors within our image is going to be by adding a percentage or subtracting a percentage of the given color within the color. It sounds confusing, but when you experiment with it, it actually becomes second nature pretty quickly. Now I do have a painting background, so this helps. So when I'm in the color red here, if I want to uh, remove the amount of cyan that's in there, our reds are going to get more red. If I increase the amount of cyan that's in there, our reds are going to get less red because we're mixing the complement into the color red, which is going to subdue it. 
or pull it down, which is essentially what would happen when we mix pigments together in painting. So here, if we increase the magenta within the color red, that red is going to get ultimately more magenta. If we decrease it, it's going to get more green. If we increase the amount of yellow in the color red, it's going to get more yellow. If we decrease it, it's going to get more blue. And that's where our color starts to turn that magenta color. That's how we start to get those types of hue shifts within the selective color adjustment layer. What you also see here is that we have these terms relative and absolute. Um, for all intents and purposes, what you want to consider with these is that absolute is going to be a very strong adjustment and relative is going to be a reduced adjustment. Meaning if we were to select absolute on this and increase the amount of cyan that's in there and then maybe the magenta that's in there and experiment with this, we can get that color red to be more on the cyan level. But if we change that to relative, it's not going to be as strong of an adjustment because it's the relative values and not the absolute values. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but what I do know is that based on pattern recognition and repetition, that I tend to stay in the relative area because it's a slower adjustment. And when I'm working with color, I want it to be slower. Very rarely, if ever, do I click the absolute value there. Okay, so that's one thing that you're not going to see in HSL. It doesn't have the ability to be uh, relative or uh, absolute. But what it does have within a given color, let's say red, is the ability to change the range of that color. So in our selective color adjustment layer, when we're in the color red, all we know is that we're in the color red. What we can do here in HSL is we can actually expand where the color red is going to affect our image. So watch this. I'll just do a, a bump in, in our saturation and maybe a, a strong reduction in our hue to make it more, let's make it more of like this um, magenta color because it looks off, right? Looking at this in the range section here, it doesn't actually say range, but this is saying that our reds have now turned this uh, bluish kind of ultramarine magenta color. Now, if we increase this spread here, look over on the left-hand side, of this image and how it is grabbing more of those magentas to then become these settings for our, our hue and our saturation. Now, if we expand that range, it's now moving into our blues. If we expand it to this side, it's moving into our yellows and we can change what the color red actually is going to affect in our photograph. So we can say, yes, this was the color red, but I need a little bit more out of it. So you can boost that range a little bit to make what Photoshop thinks is red more red as it goes into the yellows and it goes into the blues. Now, this doesn't seem like it would have that much of a helpful effect when we're looking at these horrible adjustments that I did here. But when we talk about this, when it comes in terms of slight increases and reductions in color, it gives you a nice range to pull those colors together to make the yellows more like the reds and make the magentas more like the reds. So we can expand the range of the effect of what we've just done to make those colors get closer together on the color wheel, as you see here on this color wheel. If we were to just pull this back down to the reds like this, okay, and then reduce that range so it's just affecting the reds, you'll see that our magentas and our yellows go back to somewhat normal, right? So let's go ahead and reverse that effect. We'll do the same thing here, make sure all that stuff is cleared out. So we've discussed some of the surface level differences. We've discussed some of the ways that we can control these things. Uh, but now we need to kind of talk about when and where do we use these things? Well, with HSL, as I've said before, it can be a very useful tool for helping you determine where the colors are in your image. By using the targeted adjustment tool, we can click on the color blue up here, and we now know that we are only in the color blue and modifying the saturation of the color blue. Now, you can push the saturation only so far, all right? I wouldn't say going any higher than maybe, you know, the 20s, because what happens is we start to get this kind of pixelation that happens in that saturation. The main thing that you need to understand here about the HSL adjustment layer is that there is no governor here. I mean, you can basically tell blue to become 100 percent saturated, 100 percent black and get a huge shift in the hue. This is not something that is very easily done in the selective color adjustment layer. You can modify that hue, you can push the saturation, and you can also push how dark the color blue appears, but there's a governor in there, especially when we are using that absolute versus relative governor that we have that's already kind of built into the selective color adjustment layer. I say this about the HSL because I want you to use it selectively and use it sparingly. What you'll also notice here is that HSL in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom versus HSL in Photoshop is completely different. Actually, HSL in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom already has a pre-built-in governor that will only allow your reds to get a certain degree on the hue shift. 
So your reds might be able to get to orange, but they won't be able to get to yellow. Your reds might be able to get to that middle magenta color, but they won't be able to get to full magenta. Here, if we go into the color red, and we select that color red with the targeted adjustment tool, and we move this over, we can make red its complete opposite on the color wheel towards cyan. That is not something that would be possible in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So I say that because the HSL adjustment layer is not very forgiving if you move too fast. So you want to make subtle adjustments with that. Where selective color comes in, though, is that we can't really make a big hue shift for that, especially when we have the relative setting checked here. Now, we can get our reds to be closer to those yellows, and we can get a hue shift out of those reds here. You see that dramatically in the actual physical color of red, but in the image, we don't see it nearly as much as we do in the physical color of red. So let me go ahead and reset that there. So the way selective color adjustment works is it's slower. Yes, it's definitely slower. If we go into maybe the color blue, uh, the questions that we ask ourselves as we go through these things is we have cyan, magenta, and yellow here. Don't get confused by that. What I want you to think to yourself is, okay, what color am I in? I'm in the color blue. Do I want more cyan in the color blue? If yes, increase it. If you want to pull some of the cyan out to make it more of a natural blue, Move it to the left. You're pulling the, you're actually pulling cyan out of the color blue by moving it to the left and making it that blue more red. Okay. The next question you have to ask yourself is, do I want more magenta in that color blue? Or do I want to take magenta out of that color blue and in turn add a little bit of green to it, right? That because we're on the opposite side of the color wheel here, opposite of magenta is green, opposite of red is cyan and vice versa. Opposite of yellow is blue. That, that color wheel right there helps us determine exactly what that's going to look like. Okay. Now we're still in the color blue yellow. Do I want more yellow present in the color blue to make it less blue? Or do I want to remove yellow from the color blue to make it more blue? Okay. These are painting techniques. So what happens here is you can basically move these sliders and, and get a, a mix of these colors. It's almost like you've got a painter's palette right there. And instead of controlling the hue and saturation based off of the actual physical hue and saturation, because painters can't do that, painters would have to say, okay, I need this blue to be more potent. So let me add this, or I need this blue to be a little less potent. So let me add its complement. Now I did say at the beginning of this, which one is better? And are we going to put these head to head and have them fight to the death? Not necessarily, <laughs> okay, because they both have their own place in our image, especially when we use them in this order as we see here. Here we can use these together very well for two different reasons. If we take the HSL adjustment layer here, actually, let's look at selective color first. And we say, you know, I'm scratching my head here, what color is this right here? I don't really know what that is. So if I'm in selective color and I'm like, is it my reds? Is it my yellows? I don't know. Well. The, the HSL adjustment layer, we can grab the targeted adjustment tool. We can click on that area and say, ah, that's the yellows. Okay. So if I zoom in here, this area right here is going to be my yellows. This area right here is going to be my reds, right? So that tells us, okay, here's my yellows. Here's my reds. Maybe I'm not going to do any adjustments to the HSL right now. But if I go into the selective color adjustment layer, I now know where yellow is in my photo because I use the data selection from the HSL to find out where yellow and red are in my image. Boom, that's totally cool because now as we're going in selective color, I can make a better assessment of what colors I'm going to be modifying by using that target adjustment tool in the HSL adjustment layer. Now it does extend a little bit further than that. Let's take a look at the color blue here in selective color adjustment. So in the selective color adjustment, if I zoom in here on the color blue and I start modifying the color blue, I want to make that more blue. So I'm going to remove some of the yellow from it. I'm going to add some cyan there to get some of that nice coloring there. And then I'll add some magenta there to make it a little bit more intense. Okay. Um, so that does a great job of intensifying those colors in the, in the color blue area of the image. Right. But if I go into HSL here and then I click on that color blue up there, if I increase the saturation of the color blue a little bit here, and then maybe darken it a little bit here, I can also use that underlying data that's here in the HSL adjustment layer to push those colors a little bit more because it can be hard sometimes to refine that color so much that you're like, I need some more saturation in this selective color. How do I do it in the selective color adjustment layer? How do I get more saturation in there? Well, sometimes you can't get that more saturation in there, but you can, if you put that HSL adjustment layer underneath it and you boost that saturation a slight bit, which then gives that selective color adjustment layer on top, 
that nice smooth transition to grab those colors of those blues and get them exactly where you want them to be. So think of it like this. The hue saturation adjustment layer underneath the selective color adjustment layer can be the heavy lifter. It's the one that says, let's make blue more intense, but hey, let's not make it go too intense here, okay? Let's get that blue to be more intense and use selective color to slowly modify and refine it. Because it can be hard to go into the hue here of, let's say, the color blue and increase that. And you're like, I'm adding more cyan to this, right? Because it's making it a little bit more intense. We're changing the hue of those color blues. But going into the selective color adjustment layer, we have a lot more control over what color is creating the hue of that color blue. So that's how they can be used together. There's also a really cool thing that we can do here when it comes to the range of a given color. Let's say we go into our reds here and in the color red, we're going to say, let's remove some of the cyan from those reds. We're actually going to zoom in here and look at the wall here so we can see what's happening. We're removing some cyan from that red and look, the red is starting to pop, right? Let's add a little bit of magenta to that red and then let's boost the yellows in the color red. So within the color red, we were able to make those granite structures have that really nice coloring to them, but we've also pushed them pretty far here. So what we can do here in the HSL adjustment layer is if we click on that color, which is going to be our color red and we, we increase the saturation there. Okay. We'll boost that saturation a slight bit. So that, sele that selective color works a whole lot more, but we increase the range of the color red, right? So we'll boost this over here make that red have a, a, a bigger range into our yellows and then even a bigger selection into our color yellow and then slightly over into the magentas a little bit here as well. Now, if we zoom in here and we look at that, let's turn this on and off. Okay. What we've done is we've effectively increased the range of where this selective color adjustment layer can affect the color red, because we're saying that red is now a little bit more yellow and it's a little bit more magenta by increasing that range spread so that when we do come in and do that selective modification with the selective color adjustment layer, which moves a lot slower to make much more refined adjustments, we can make a better assessment of what we want our reds to look like. Now, um, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Let's see what happens when we turn this HSL off. See, we boosted the range for those for that color red. And if we look at the before, there's really not a whole lot of color back here at all. The selective color did help us boost that color a little bit, but that HSL adjustment just punched it up just a little bit to add a more refinement to our selective color adjustment that we did for this. Okay. So they can be used together and actually they're probably best used together. And when you start to master the HSL and selective color adjustment layer, both separately and together, you're going to get better colors in your image. If we zoom in back here to an image that I took in the Badlands, look at how selective color can make a good boost for these beautiful. If you've ever seen these hills uh, in uh, the evening in the Badlands, they just glow, but you can't really capture it in your camera. But if we go into selective color adjustment layer, we can boost up those yellows and reds, make a really nice refined look for how our colors should be. I would say that just about every image I process goes through some level of HSL or selective color to modify and refine those colors and make them absolutely gorgeous. So it's not about which one is better. All right. Neither one of them are better than the other. They're both used for very different things. And actually when they're used together are phenomenal in your workflow. What we've touched on here is one of my favorite topics called color grading. I have an entire playlist here on color grading. So click here if you'd like to learn a whole lot more about color than what we just talked about in this video. And if you like this, please consider subscribing. I like to take very difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.